any of you ever Googled buzzwords? Anyone? And I don't mean buzzword that is currently popular. I mean the term buzzwords. Do you know what buzzwords actually stand for? It determines the fashion, the jargon, something that is popular in the moment. So when you Google buzzwords, that's what comes out, particularly in Wikipedia. And that's exactly what reflects the buzzwords. So they can be disguised in many forms. Do we have here people from academia? Yes? And you certainly do write papers. So when you write papers, the keywords, what are they? The most popular things at the moment in your research field. The buzzword. Projects. How many of you here wrote projects to get grants, for example? So what do you do? You write a project actually for a reviewer because you want to impress the reviewer and to get the money. So what do you do? You try to uh, choose the correct buzzwords and to integrate them everywhere that you think that it's crucial so that you get the money and your project actually gets excellent grades or marks. So buzzwords come in many forms. Conferences. Now I'm going to ask you, when you go and look at the topics of the conference, what do you see? Exactly. So here is a reward for you. Can I throw it? It's RFID protection for a single card and announces the conferences in Novi Sad and in Berlin. So, you can look for more buzzwords here. Buzzwords are actually good, but sometimes they can be misleading. See, for this that we prepared for the conference, to, add, to market the conference, we look in the brochure to order this, and it says, hold cards, with S at the end, plural but you will see that they actually can hold only one card. So marketing, not really, actually marketing failure, but hopefully not failure for the conference. So anyone wants this? Yes? So like flying animals? Okay. <laughs> I was afraid that I could actually hit someone's head. We, can, we have actually more, and for each question, I'm going to reward a person with one bracelet or this uh, card holder. So, as you can see, buzzwords are everywhere and in many forms. However, when you look at the buzzwords, how they are born, if you look in the industry or fashion or academia, they are actually born all in the same way. You have something that worked or didn't work. And people need to find their place. They need to find, for example, something novel for research, something a little bit different. For example, like some decade ago, neural networks were like really, really huge. And if you look now for neural networks, you will not find much. But what you will find? There was machine learning, then all of a sudden deep learning. And those that evolved from neural networks, they know that actually they hold the same roots artificial intelligence. 
But why all these differences? Why we don't call it machine learning still, for example? Why all of a sudden deep learning? What's the difference between deep learning and before? Well, all of a sudden we got more computational power. We could introduce more layers and we could actually go deeper. So deeper, someone thought, oh, look, deep learning, I introduce novelty into this so that it's not the same old thing before. And all of a sudden, we have a buzzword. Great, right? So that's how they're born. So you have something old, something new, and you create a buzzword. But why did I put something blue? Because lots of the times, you actually sweat before you pursue people that your buzzword is the buzzword. And sometimes when there is a new process or a method, what can happen is that people implement it in a different ways, and then all of a sudden you end up in situations where it's not so fun or you just don't know how to explain that you have a different point of view and that you think that your point of view is the correct one. For example, how many of you are in project management? Tom, of course. Well, I get to that point too. Do we have industry people here? <laughs> Tom? Okay. Have you heard of, for example, waterfall method? Waterfall. Yes. Have you heard of Scrum? Well, Scrum method is now really popular in industry in project management because it can bring the results fast. And that's a kind of a definition for a Scrum method. But what happened a lot of time, I don't know why I get this echo back, so it's kind of like really uh, unusual to talk and then to listen to yourself. Uh, so, lots of time, uh, people actually want, particularly industry, to shorten time to market. They need to give the results like really, really fast. And Scrum promises that. You have uh, coaches in Scrum that say, oh, you know what? Scrum is actually simple to understand, but it's really complicated to implement. So what happens sometimes, people actually put words from the Scrum books ad literum in work. And all of a sudden, you get like really, really funny situations. And for example, they say, look, uh, we need to lose all the titles. But then you have a project owner and Scrum master. Those are not titles. Those are something that is part of the Scrum system. So people get, for example, you don't really estimate the time in Scrum. Actually, you do, but in a different way. It's more agile, it's more adaptive. And then what happened, and that's from real life story, is that engineer comes and said, I cannot really estimate when the product will be ready and he tells that to customer. Of course, customer is angry. But Scrum is a good method, and it's a recent buzzword in project management. Not that recent, actually. So here I have a picture that many of you actually seen in a different forms. This is the original. This is the first one, the zero picture. And it tells how someone described the product, how the whole team designed the product, implemented the product, and what the customer wanted. So the similar things actually happen with the buzzwords, and that's why the sweat. But 
if you try to implement something without really thinking, then you come to dogma. For example, you do go to the Scrum books and say, this read and say, here is how you have to implement things. We need to have um, sprints like every two weeks. You have to be flexible. You have to actually look at the things and think for yourself before you follow the masses. And so you have buzzwords everywhere. And in Scrum, the most important thing is power of collaboration. That's the heart of Scrum. If you don't know anything about the Scrum, maybe now you're a little bit more interesting to search Google for this buzzword in project management. Also, buzzwords bring power of change. So, how many of you followed recent changes in automotive industry? Yep. So, we can listen today about self-driving vehicles, autonomous driving, for example. But how many of you know that automotive industry was like really, really legit before? It was really close circle. Not many those small players could enter the arena. Now, with all these changes, all of a sudden, the business model automotive changes. Not just in how they conduct their business, but also in how people are going to use in the future, the vehicles and stuff. So, with buzzwords, we actually can feel the power of change. Also, interesting thing, for example, we can see how ready we are to follow those changes. There is a new kind of engineer, if I can ho call that a new kind of engineer, in automotive industry that haven't really existed before because the cars are not the same as before. They are more software-oriented parts now, and software actually takes over of, me of mechanical parts, role of mechanical parts. And academia was not ready for that new changes in automotive industry. So when they, the HR looked for this new engineer, there was Catch-22. They couldn't find one with the correct papers. Now, the academia caught up, and you have this new automotive engineer uh, curriculum. But for some time, there was a gap. So, ecology, for example. Buzzwords, lots of buzzwords that try to tell us that we need to be like really careful with our life environment. So what happens? Clean energy. We want clean energy, of course. We want things that will make our life easier, but at the same time preserve all the things that the life and ecosystem needs. We don't want to spoil that. So what happened is, well, we don't want that dirty energy like coil plants or nuclear plants. We want to uh, tame the power of water. So what happened was that the buzzwords brought to something like this. Something like this. So the buzzwords can be good but we really, really need to think. That's why we need to call common sense in the play. Do you know what this is? They're putting rivers in pipes. Not really rivers, those little streams in woods. 
And by doing that, they're actually ruining the nature, the very essence of nature for a few kilowatts. While we have technology to actually prevent that. But it's a buzzword. Now, I put this slide smart because talking about the buzzwords would not be really uh, a talk when I know that I have here a creator of many buzzwords and not invite him to actually be part of this talk. So, if you go on his Twitter account, I don't have Twitter, I have to admit, but he has. So if you go to his Twitter account, you see that he loves people, questions media or, and technology in that order. Right and left brain enabled. Ladies and gentlemen, Nahum Gershon. So he is going to talk about smart. In one of the shows of last year's, uh, there was a smart mirror, okay, in the bathroom. That means that when you shave and you want to know the weather, you tap on the mirror and you ask what the weather. You want to know your weight, there is a weight on there, and then it, it will tell you after you touch the, the mirror, uh, it will tell you what your weight is. And then a friend of mine, he's from Germany, and you know, people from Germany like everything to be very clean. So he asked me, so, uh, but that l would leave fingerprints on the mirror. So I went back to the exhibit and asked them, is this mirror self-cleaning? And they said no. So I thought about that. How come they don't understand how human beings conduct their lives or want to, who like to conduct their lives? And put a, a, pro a product like that, they call it smart. It's not so smart, yeah? Uh, the, Maybe smarter would be to ask Alexa, if you really want to know the, what the weather when you shave, you ask Alexa what the weather and she will tell you. But you want also to make Alexa not listen to all the sounds that are happening in the bathroom, right? So you want an Alexa with a button. So only when you press the button, it, uh, you, he, she starts listening. So that's just, got, just one example. Uh, another example, I have some cameras around my house. I have some cameras around my house and uh, not that I'm paranoid, but I, I like to play around with those instruments and get some experience by just playing around. And sometimes it interprets motion as a change, right? If you have a picture and there is a motion, the picture changes, it interprets that as motion. So as a result, during the day, I get many, many, many alerts. Something is moving in your house, something moving outside your house, okay? And they don't think that actually uh, the distractions that beep, 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 beep happens. And you know, there is now kind of research is being done that lots of beeps are not actually good for you, not good for your understanding, and actually not good for your psyche, okay? So uh, that's just another example. So the cameras are not so smart, right? Uh, so I thought maybe instead of calling it the internet of things, I'll call it the internet of nothing, okay? And maybe you will have a scale from, from things, internet of things, to internet of nothing, and things in between, okay? Uh, I'm still waiting, okay? But maybe that's a good, that's a good idea. Uh, there are many other examples. For example, uh, 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 you know, uh, I have a, an, one of the hubs I have at home, and the one time it start, stopped functioning when I was traveling, okay? So they have a very good phone service. I called them, they told me, oh, you need to reboot the device. I said, but I'm not at home. Oh, you need to be at home. I said, you, you, you designed this device to act, to act also when I'm not at home, how come I cannot boot it up from remotely? So that's just another example. And then, you know, in one of the other shows, there was a counter, uh, there was a, a kitchen counter, and they call it Smart Kitchen, okay? And uh, a, the, the nice thing was about the counter is that it's, it's sensitive to pressure, so wherever you put the kettle or any object that has some weight, it will start heating, okay? So, and then the water boiled and they removed it. So I asked him, after you move the kettle from the counter, that place is still hot? Yes. And there is no marking for that. So, you know, at home, 
Uh, you tell your kids not to go, the little kids, not to go near the oven, okay? You don't put papers on there, but here you don't know what's hot or not. So for that, I would not actually call it smart. I'll use another S word, stupid, okay? Or maybe I'll, uh, maybe I'll use another word, uh, not smart, by, but bull smart. I know what the acronym for that. So I think that we have a good number of examples of, uh, of, of using of this buzzword smart in, in areas where it's not so smart. Any smart questions? So if we want to have smart products, we need smart engineers. What sort of uh, education or training do they, they need that they don't get today to actually make their products smart? Okay. Uh, we need to teach them to be a little bit more human. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm just... I'm just uh, See me after the talk. <laughs> now, I, the thing, I'll give an example. There is, there is a, a strip mall near my house, okay? And I thought, I thought I'll, run, I'll run maybe an exercise how to convert into a smart strip, smart mall, okay? So I went around there. I, I walk from my house. It's about a block away. And when I cross the main street and try to enter the, the, the strip mall, the, star, the, the sidewalk stop. They assume that all the people who go there go with cars. So I could maybe dance around the cars, but if I, I'm a parent with a, with, a young, with a young baby, you know, on a stroller, or, in, or if I'm, a, God forbid, handicapped, how do, I, how do I walk there? So they need, we need to start teaching engineers to look into other human beings and to watch how life is being conducted. And maybe... I think that maybe some of the conferences will do some exercises like that, where we'll take a part of the city and we'll, we'll try and, 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 and as an exercise to, 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 to try to understand how people live their lives there, how they want things done, and then, and it's not, you know, not the, you know in German, you would say, like Deutsche is über alles, you know, Hitler said, say, technology is, is nicht über alles. The technology is not above all. There are also people. So we need to be, we need to have, I believe, when you teach engineering, you need also to teach engineers uh, some kind of like, some maybe the human aspects of things, okay? Not just technology. So, yes? <laughs> So uh, I'm a fairly new resident here in, in Las Vegas, just learning about the, the area. And uh, I attended an event, and a lady walks up to me, introduces herself. Uh, she's a renowned concert violinist who is now the dean of the School of Fine Arts at Las Vegas. And she says, I, I'd like you to join our advisory board. I said, You're, I'm an engineer. I don't have that part of my brain active. And they tell me that They've started a program here called Engineering Entertainment, which is collaboration with the uh, engineering school on the idea that if you're primarily left-brained, you're probably not going to be able to wake up your right brain and vice versa. And I am just really in, intrigued by this. I mean, the architects are people, I think, who have kind of more of a balance, but it's fairly rare among our consumer electronics engineers. But having this sort of collaboration where you bring the arts and entertainment. You may not be able to do it in one person in your head, but you certainly can do it as a team if you work with, uh, with people that are like that. Actually, I've been hearing everybody keep saying left brain and right brain, and that's a great example of using a buzzword in place of thinking. It was, it was a cute thing like anal coming from Freud. But there's a physiology. Physiolog uh, well, and low brow and high brow coming from phrenology. Left brain and right brain have been proven by single blind experiments. And it's questionable how true it is. I just want to make one quick comment. I was here at CES, looking at Brian, this has got to be more than 20 years ago. One of the keynote speakers was the president's advisor on handicapped, I think under the Carter administration maybe. And he was responsible for curb cuts that were added into cities. And they did a study on the effectiveness of curb cuts. And they looked at an intersection in New York City and they counted the number of people that crossed through the curb cuts. And these were intended for handicapped people in wheelchairs to get over the curbs. And they found that less than 1% of the people who crossed the intersection at the curb cuts were handicapped. And like 80% were delivery people. 
UPS, post office, and the purpose of the curb cut to improve the effectiveness of the uh, sidewalk for the handicapped people ended up being a substantial improvement for everybody else. Includes baby carriages as well, so. There's actually another example of, of unintended consequences. Uh, there was a military, I think it was a lieutenant, who re looked how do you get the military vehicles across the country in 1917. Uh, and he used that 50 years later to justify the interstate defense highway system. That was meant, prim the primary value was to be military vehicles traveling around the country. And what we got with the interstate highways. Well, it's a good idea. <laughs> but, it, it, but the problem is the engineering, the engineering rationale where the real value was were very different. Look, I, th I think that there is a value to everything. So, you know, so uh, you need a balance, like in everything else. Common and, uh, sense. It, Common sense. Common sense. Yes? That's what we have science, common sense. Uh, yes. Just. Any more smart comments? Yeah. Yes, there is. You know, I'm following the uh, smart things. We start with smart meter, then we call it smart house. Then we say smart grid, smart microgrid. Then we came to smart city. Are we rebranding things? The buzzword is we are rebranding things, you know. Uh, deep learning, um, data analytic, machine learning. So the... Is this rebranding? Because if you go to the deep things, it's the same. Take the energy concept. Smart meter, smart building, smart microgrid, smart grid, smart energy. So You know, I missed the beginning of your question. Uh, the beginning is, is, is the, the buzzword, are they rebranding things? If you have smart meter, then you call it smart house, smart grid, smart microgrid. And they're all doing the same. Uh, yeah, sometimes, my, sometimes buzzwords are overused or misused, or um, that's why. IoT, industrial internet of things, cyber physical system. You get confused, you know? If you go deeper, they're all doing the same. Exactly, that's what uh, we started with. That basically, you know that if you are in the field for a long time, you can actually follow how it developed. And the buzzwords actually reflected those changes. So, for example, for deep learning, you all of a sudden have more computational power, and you call it deep learning now, because it reflects that you have more layers. But before, you couldn't really go with more layers because you couldn't calculate the things. You couldn't support. It would take days, months, to get the results. So. The another thing is, because you were using lots of words smart, if you follow Nahum, you know that uh, he has a special attitude toward that word. So uh, it's a perfect example that he gives when we misuse the words like smart. Giving a prefix smart to everything sometimes is raise lots of questions. Or we can just say, okay, that's the trend, that's the fashion, and we just try to uh, go with the flow. And let me ask you a question. How many people you know, yourself, that have a brain, but they're not smart? Present company excluded, of course. So the fact that you put a sensor on something does not make it smart. You want to say something, Stu? Some, you want to say something smart, Stu? Uh, I'm not, not supposed to get political, but I think there are a lot of dumb people on both sides of the aisle in Congress at the moment. So, You know, you know the... Uh, in, uh, in, at least in our country, and I'm sure just about everywhere else, you know, there are institutions that we revere 
and we honor them with poems and songs and that sort of thing. So we have a, a song for each branch of our military. We have a song about the flag and about our country and the national anthem and everything else. There is no song to honor Congress. Because there will be too many voices, you know. It's too complicated to write a piece like that. So we can actually turn this to a panel now about the buzzwords and reflections of the buzzwords. Anybody has any comments, questions? Smart questions, smart comments. Hi, about the... about is passport smart. I think a lot would be um, better if it just could distinguish between, between smart and design. Like the countertop you mentioned, that's design. That's for people who want to have a clean kitchen, maybe double income, no kids, people. But it's not smart in itself. Smart is for a larger group, able to um, be adapted to needs and not just looking nice. Sometimes you have to define terms and then when you define terms, you know, uh, I assume that we all are engineers here in this um, room and that at one point or another, we actually dealt with uh, signals. So famous Fourier transform, right, in signals. And you know that we have phase there in Fourier transform. But then if you are in the field of audio and uh, you have, um, for example, stereo, you also have a phase, which is a different kind of phase. So if you read a paper and uh, someone mentions phase and you're not in the field, you may get confused. And that's not the only two examples of phases, where it phase, where you actually have different meanings, depending on the contest. So um, you actually need to know the content, and you need to know in which field you are, and you need to position yourself. And that's what buzzwords do. Sometimes they actually position the trends. They position where we are going. They position what our interests are. They position our popularity. If we are the first one to think of some new buzzword like deep learning, and we were in uh, machine learning before, right? all of a sudden we have this zero paper that everyone is going to, to cite. And if everyone pick up that word, oh great, we are in the lead. So that's the thing. Buzzwords. Yeah. You know, we understand there is a smart dishwasher, smart washing machine, smart transportation. But in a smart city, how do you define smart citizen? It's very difficult. I think that I would use a less, less strong word than smart. Um, livable city or more livable city. But it's there. It's smart city there. You cannot change it. The what? It is there. Smart city definition. I mean, smart city exists in many cities. You want to change the name because you don't want to say smart citizen? No, 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 no. Because the word smart is using so frequently, and there are so many bad examples. And even with smart cities, you, you go to any exhibit on smart cities, and you see people think they just throw sensors and the city will become smart. But they even don't understand how people would like to live their lives. You know, it's one thing if you maybe control the lights and turn on the lights when it's dark, when, you know, turn off the, on the lights in the dark and turn off, you know, stuff like that. Yes, but there are many examples that, it's just a buzzword that people use it and to sell. But you really have to show that it's really based on understanding how people conduct their lives, how people would like to conduct their life, how people like to improve their lives, and not just, you know, I'll give an example. Uh, in Toronto, uh, there is a big project of making part of Toronto kind of quote-unquote smart, 
and uh, it's actually supported by Google, and, and, and they say, uh, we are going to build it from the technology up, not from the people up, from the technology up. That means first we put technology, and then we just assume that people enjoy it. But people don't always enjoy technology, okay? You don't enjoy that your phone, for example, beeps 20 million times a day. It's distracting, you cannot work. Uh, you see a couple, sometimes it's by will, it's like addictive, and uh, they eat breakfast together, right? But each one is using their own cell phone. It looks like they're, married, they're more married to their cell phone than to each other. So, so you really need to be sensitive. And when you, you say smart city, you really want to make sure that what you do really enhance people's life and, and not just degrade it. Does it answer your question? We can talk more about it. Yeah, yeah. I Thank just you. said we can open a panel. Maybe actually a good idea. Nahum is going to set up a panel for ICC Berlin in September this year, so you're all invited. In Berlin, closer to Dubai. Any other questions, comments? Some example from your experience. If you like, if you come up with a question later on, you can send us email. We will be happy to respond, to read it and to respond. I have a very so, basic question. Yep. Can I ask? I have a very basic question. What is smartness? What? How do you define smartness? What I, what I would think smart would be a system that will have some, what I call IQ, okay, that will be intelligent enough uh, to create something that people would like and will enrich their lives, okay, and, and something that will have, as Godana said, common sense. I'll give you an example. I, I use a lot Uber and, and Lyft, okay, and the way they, they give them instructions in my neighborhood are usually totally wrong, the long way, okay. Uh, or for example, uh, Google now, uh, the Uber now has a way, we use a carpool, uh, they have, they, they would park, they would collect, they would take you, uh, ask you to join them within five minutes walk. So near my house there is a main street, so of course it's more straightforward to, but main street lots of traffic, it's not allowed to park there. So first of all, the, 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 the driver, the driver will, will get a ticket, if the policeman come there, and B, if you do it during rush hour, it will terrible. At one time, he dropped me there, and there was a big commotion there around the car. Okay, so so the system does not understand what simple people understand or know. Okay, so you know, so smart something that will bring real value, not just value to the one who sells it, but also the value to the one who buys it. Okay. Thank you. Well, in a smart uh, grid or smart power system, you could say this is a smart switch where it collects data. And you call it intelligent switch if it makes a decision on the data. Smart citizen who use the smart devices to see what's the weather today so you can wear, what's the uh, traffic jam so you could avoid it. But intelligent people, that's gift from God. Okay, uh, collecting data, what's so smart about collecting data? Collecting data is, could be not so smart. I mean, what's so smart? But you need to distinguish between smart and intelligent people. Hey. I think yeah. make, making, a, making an intelligent decision is probably smartness, rather than collecting data. But again, intelligence is another buzzword that people from artificial intelligence brought in, it onto us, okay? So, so, you know, that's another story, another session about in, what's intelligent, okay? okay. <laughs> to be continued. Yeah. Exactly, sure. we are now in a buzzword. So, 
to kind of wrap it up, buzzwords, they can indicate changes, they can show the history of some area changes, they can dictate trends, they can establish role models, they can motivate, they can encourage responsibility, respect, enthusiasm, devotion, passion, especially in project management. That's all what you want. You want to motivate your people to work and to give the best results. So what you do, you create mottos and buzzwords and uh, get them hyped to actually give the excellent performance. Well, <clears throat> buzzwords, some are greatly used, some are misused, some are timeless, like a black dress. They are now part of our culture. Some vanish, that's life, and some evolve. They become some different word, buzzword. Well, I hope I'll see you at the next CES conference, where we'll continue this or similar discussions. You mean ICC? Yeah, in ICC Berlin, Berlin or Zinc Zooming Innovation in Consumer in Novisad, or East in Italy, or next year in Las Vegas, or ICC Taiwan. Just pick one. See, society has lots of conferences and um, lots of brainstorming going on on those conferences. So, I well, hope I'll see you soon again. Yeah, okay, thank, thank you. you to both the speakers.